Hey, good morning, friends. It's Thursday, April uh, 28th. I uh, hope you're doing well as we continue into the deeper, into the season of Easter. Uh, we are sitting in a posture of joy, a posture of gratefulness as we uh, dwell in the midst of resurrection, celebration that Jesus has overcome death and God is bringing about new life, new creation in our midst. And, and we get to be a part of that. We're invited to be a part of that. Part of the way we uh, celebrate that, of course, is by praying the psalms that we've been praying now for a couple of years together. Uh, today we're looking at Psalm 17. Psalm 17. So let's take a moment to quiet our hearts and I'll read this for us. Hear me, Lord. My plea is just. Listen to my cry. Hear my prayer. It does not rise from deceitful lips. Let my vindication come from you. May your eyes see what is right. Though you probe my heart, though you examine me at night and test me, you will find I have planned no evil. My mouth has not transgressed. Though people tried to bribe me, I have kept myself from the ways of the violent through what your lips have commanded. My steps have held to your paths. My feet have not stumbled. I call on you, my God, and you will answer me. Turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. Show me the wonders of your great love. Who, You who save by your right hand, those who take refuge in you from their foes. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings from the wicked who are out to destroy me, from my mortal enemies who surround me. They close up their callous hearts and their mouths speak with arrogance. They have tracked me down. They now surround me with eyes alert to throw me to the ground. They are like a lion hungry for prey, like a fierce lion crouching in cover. Rise up, Lord, confront them, bring them down. With your sword, rescue me from the wicked. By your hand, save me from such people, Lord, from those of this world whose reward is in this life. May what you have stored up for the wicked fill their bellies. May their children gorge themselves on it. May there be leftovers for their little ones. As for me, I will be vindicated and will see your face. When I awake, I will be satisfied with seeing your likeness. So again, we're, uh, we're looking at these psalms, this, this prevalent theme that comes up uh, many times in the psalms themselves, and that is this juxtaposition, this comparison between the ways of the righteous and the ways of the wicked. Um, this recognition that in our world, um, the world we live in, uh, the ways of the righteous often work. They often win. They often uh, obtain power and significance. They have prestige. They have affluence. They, they do work, right? That's why they're so popular. They bring about uh, temporal happiness. They um, fill uh, those who do them with a sense of gratefulness, I guess. I, I don't know. I, I mean, it's, it, it, the, the, there's a reason why people are drawn to these, to the ways that are not of God. Um, and so we can get frustrated because we see this. You know, if we're trying to live our lives as Christ would have us live, uh, it won't always pay off in the ways we're used to. Um, and yet, part of the life of faith is trusting that though that may be true, um, we do it anyway. And that God is glorified when these things happen, when we do. And that somehow, by living into the ways of God, we will actually find the best way to live, the fullest way to live. Not necessarily the happiest or the most affluent, certainly not. Um, there's a price to following Jesus, right? Jesus himself said, count the cost before you follow me. 
So we want to we don't want to be naive about that, and yet, in faith, we 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 believe that this is the way we're created to live, and so we attempt to do that. Kind of some rambling thoughts there um, for this day. Hope hope there's something in there that connects with you. Certainly the psalm itself is nothing else. But I want to invite you to join me as we pray for the day ahead. Let's pray. Lord, it's good to take this time, this moment in the day to lift up our prayers, to read your word, to feel your presence among us, to be united with other people in our community, our fellowship, who also join in these days with these prayers and these, these readings. We thank you for the unity that you offer through your Holy Spirit to your church and pray that we would know that today and that it would encourage us. We pray that we would truly feel that sense of belonging to something so much bigger than who we are individually. Lord, thank you for the significance and the meaning and the purpose that you fill our lives with. And pray that as we live out this day, that it will be done in the spirit of, of your son, Jesus. Lord, today we want to lift up our prayers for the things that are on our hearts and minds. We think of the people in our congregation who are in need today. We've named them in various mornings. We know that you know who they are. We pray that you would <clears throat> bless those who are sick and comfort those who mourn be with those who are facing uh, surgeries or other procedures, encourage and give endurance to those who are recovering. Lord, for relationships that are, that are strained, we pray you bring your, 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 your power. Friends, I invite you to lift up the specifics of what's on your heart today. Lord, hear, hear our prayers. And so, Lord, we give this day back to you. I ask that you would be with us in it. Lord, help us to be people who, who, who bring the good news of your kingdom by what we do and say, who we interact with, where we go, the way we steward our time and our resources, the very lives that you've given us. Be with us today, Lord. Help us to see your presence. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, have a great day today. God bless you. Uh, good to be with you this morning. Take care. We'll see you soon.